you're going to find yourself getting passed by multiple cars, I mentioned earlier on, so you're off in a very precarious situation, but he often finds himself in these in these places, to qualify as well as he races. The up front, they are sp getting a weird, but Lee Aberdeen, Lee Aberdeen and Luca Verani, not very far apart at all here, but we just want to see how Hall Alistair Haight deals with Marcello Kessler, coming around the old hairpin. I would say it's not the best decision they've ever made, just not having done that under the safety car, really. Yeah, they're taking their piece up strategies from Ferrari lately, like something that's going on. In turn one, just too much gas on them, too much feet on the loud pedal, and I thought she's dropped him all the way down at the order, but Philip Hammer is eight out in front by an 8.91 seconds. Dan Michael is a wall there, sir. Um, and Debbie doesn't want to be hearing that earlier on as well. Did put the understeer is in the dirty air through that final corner because it's such a long corner and you get dragged off into the grass very easily. You love the slipstream jumping towards the chicane. Peterson was briefly alongside, but that slipstream is safe and kept him in third. Yeah, Barani now lost a little bit of time to Aberdeen, about half a second. Peterson is at all. Pike's pushed more and fell and up ahead. He's got out of line. It's now Pike going to have a go. Werrell, don't push him off. He's in the championship fight. Jack Werrell chasing down Carl Jacklin. Further down, Rob Williams and Chris Barnes. Sensational run outside line now, though, for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. Look Whoa. how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly. Miller's just like dropping. He's like on second and change. All of a sudden, Miller's back in play. Moving on to the back end of Bill Jocelyn. So there's been a lot of movers and shakers in this first two laps here for racing. Yeah, absolutely serious racing league. Everybody's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's all um, about the entertainment. So I hope everybody is enjoying themselves out there in the chat. We know that Ron is at the enjoying himself oh watching the Burger King machines off into the grass a little bit there as they're really bunching up now.
coming down. Does he have it? He's on the outside line though, going into the fastest corner on the circuit. Surely this can't work. Dominic Ligner has got a sensational run outside line now though for the heavy braking zone. Around the outside goes the Audi R8. And look how much Miller's caught back into play. Exactly, Miller's just like Chopper. He's like on second and change. All of a sudden Miller's back in play. Can Barry do it? Big Barry's gonna do it! Big Barry! Time for round three of the JPB GT4 Global Challenge and we're here at the Algarve circuit in Portimao in Portugal. My name's Alex Goldschmidt returning back to the booth after a little bit of a hiatus aka the last couple of weeks. It's been a busy time at the moment. Joining me in the booth very shortly will be James Parfit but we have got some scores on the doors to take you through at the moment. So first of all let's head over to the pro driver standings after the opening two rounds. What we do have is that Sven Demmel in the BMW is currently leading the way on 144 points ahead of Kim Andre Bjorklund. Jordan Malcolm has dropped to third in the standings ahead of Ketel Larsen and Alexander Skaret, who have both moved up to fourth and fifth in the standings respectively on 104 and 103 points. Gordon Hauger in the uh, Porsche for SRN. Uh, Pol uh, Polya Klemi, or however you want to call it, uh, 98 points. Gordon Hauger, who has switched uh, to Porsche this time. Uh, rather rapid in the McLaren, and I'm a bit concerned he might not be on his best behaviour. Well, as in trying to be in harmony with the car underneath him. Uh, drops to six. The head of Tours, uh, Tour Anders Be Bervin in the Team Viking Thor BMW. Simon Mulderclive in eighth. Head of Tobias Holman and Alejandro Silva Caride from Luchas. Amundere rounds out the top 10. Miles Owings has dropped to 11th, ahead of fellow teammates at Sim Race Sweden Esports, Ewan Bremer. Anders Lillajorde, David Corpas Benitez, Jesus Am uh, Amarande, uh, Amundere, uh, Marcus Giesdahl, Chris Barnes, and Gavin Petty round out the drivers in the pro standings. Then we have a look at the pro team standings, and it's SRN. Polya uh, El Klemi with uh, Bjorklund and Hauger leading on 214 points ahead of IGL Coatings and Sunday Traffic on 208, the pairing of Larsen and Skaritz. Mulder, Clive and Holman for SRN Bill Og Mortobloggen ran out the top three ahead of Team Viking Thor with a pair of Lily Yorde and Bourbon in that. Sven Demmel on his own with huge ass in the number in, is currently in fifth on 138 play, uh, points. Sim Race Sweden Esports dropped down to six ahead of Lurches Amundere. 1 9 with Jordan Malcolm on 106 points rounds out the top eight. Head of Triple P Racing White. The team of Barnes and Williams with Team Viking Ragnarok with Dirod and Giesdahl rounding out the top ten ahead of Lurches Academy and DCW Racing rounding out the 12. In the pro teams, Am Driver standings at Svegard Olsen Lear from uh, SRN. Uh, leading the way on 140 points. 25 ahead of Richard Jones in the SAS Racing BMW, who's joined in the top three. Just a further eight points adrift by his SAS Racing teammate, who's decided to go with uh, Weizak instead of music, Munich. Stuart Pearson. Stefan Mellis and Rob Williams ran at the top five ahead of uh, Per Havard Hafstad with Torbjorn Mele, Ivind uh, Anderson, Magnus Dirod, and Chris Evans completing the top ten. Stuart Rice and Rachel Hoff have moved up to 11th and 12th in the standings, ahead of Dan Lewis and Ike Lure from Lucas Academy, yet to get off of zero points. Last but by certainly no means least, the AM team standings. It's SRN, uh, Ike uh, Centeret, Selig, uh, uh the pair of Hafstad and Olsen Lear leading on 237 points. Out of Jones and Pearson with SAS Racing, a further 15 behind in second. Triple P Racing Black, uh, the pairing of Dan Lewis and Chris Evans on 108 points. Bounty Hunter Double X Racing, Stefan Mellis on 105. Blue Sky Esports pairing of Stuart Rice and Rachel Hoffren at the top five as SRN Hellstad Service and West Racing Norway complete the seven teams in the AM team standings and without further ado as qualifying is getting underway good evening James Parfit good evening dear sir how are you this fabulous evening well my voice has recovered significantly from Sunday night so I'm glad to be in some way shape or form being able to commentate but 
Um, this circuit has only been around for about a decade and a half. It's anti-clockwise, a lot of elevation changes, and we've got the best part of nearly 30 cars on the grid. It's going to be an interesting one, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. The fast left-hander at the beginning is going to really be interesting to watch, and not because of the fact that it's that to make shift corner is the fact of how fast it's it is it's not a sudden stop corner when you go down at certain circuits where there's a you know a 90 degree right hander or whatever it is a fast left hander so they're gonna have to follow it through then they go into Sagres, which is obviously that almost sudden stop area that they're gonna have to use it's going to be very very interesting to see how they cope with that beginning opening section and i think all in all, it could be very interesting. I'm interested to see as well, this last little bit here, as we're on now with Kim Andre Bjorklund, as he's on the right hand or on a run up into Lagos, how this is going to work out for some of them as well, because I think this is going to be quite an interesting run. Yeah, I mean, we, we did say uh, Gordon Hauger have a little bit of an off track at the moment, but over the crest here, let's take you on a hot lap with Kim Andre Bjorklund around this circuit at the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve. It's a long run down to Primera, which is the first right-hander, as Bjorklund will break from 150 miles an hour. And then it is literally straight over, snap on oversteer there from the left-hand side of the Porsche into Lagos at turn three. And then uh, you're going to have to go up a bit of an, uh, an ascent here until you've got this uh, nice little mid-stretch, which will promote some overtaking into Torre Vip, which is the uh, next corner. It's a very tight left-hander that goes uphill. So down into the dip, rotate the car around the corner, and then it's over a slight another crest here through a uh, left-hand kick where you're constantly accelerating up to fourth gear, 100 miles an hour, and then into the next right-hander, which then puts you into Samsung, uh, which is a right-hander that tightens on itself very much, and not too dissimilar from the uh, Top of the uh, top of the the, the, the sort of like the climb through Red Bull Ring, through Craig Jones. Now this Craig Jones is to do with World Supersport and the team uh, that were partially run run by the owners of this circuit uh, had a World Supersport racer named Craig Jones who competed for the team and unfortunately uh, tragically lost his life uh, back in 2008. So that's who the corner has been named after, not the Craig Jones that we normally see on this championship or in the commentary box. We're now going through Portimao uh, and then it's going to be down the hill. And again, just uh, the significant amount of ele elevation changes that we have here is uh, quite significant. Well, he's just gone through Sagres and now into Galp and it's across the line. Alexander Scarrett is uh, currently fastest in the second sector. But let's see what lap time Kim Andre Bjorklund puts in. One minute 50.675. But I think Scarrett might quickly beat that. Oh, he was close. He was uh, just over a tenth of drift there, James. But Gordon Hauger is also trying to get a little bit quicker. He's gone P3 ahead of Rachel Hoff, who's just been disposed by the likes of uh, Simon Mulderclive and Chris Barnes, with Kettle Larson now going up to P4. But Bjorklund sets the benchmark early in this 15-minute qualifying session. Yeah, he definitely does. And, and I think he's definitely going to be one to look out for, is Kim Andre Bjorklund. I'm trying to work out the conjunctions of where they are on the track map to where they are on the actual track. I've got him going around the right-hander of... Well, he's not going around the right hand of Craig Jones, is he? That's a double right hand. I think that trap map is somewhat a little bit skew with. <laughs> well, we'll uh, we'll just uh, see that they're going left or they're going right, James. I think that'll probably work best for for us both tonight. But yeah, Bjorkland uh, down in sector one. Uh, but again, like like we discussed, you know, there's there's so much lateral sideways momentum changes. You're going uphill. You're having to deal with an incline especially when you're accelerating you're really sort of having to mash the throttle a little bit to to get the car to coerce to go up those hill climbs aren't you mm. i think the the thing is that they don't want to be pushing down on it like your life depends on it you know a lot of this is making sure this car is settled and then getting the run out you know you've got to make sure that you're not mashing it as you say 
to a degree because otherwise your back end's going to come and say hello to your front and that could be the worst thing they want here because you definitely do not want to be spinning these machines out. You've got to make sure that you're in and comfortable within them because if you're not, with the amount of cars that we've got on grid at the moment, nearly 30 cars on the grid, then they're going to drop down a long way because they're going to have to wait and wait and wait until somebody goes, all of the cars go past them before he can rejoin. So I think all in all, they've got a lot to be challenged with here. Yeah, there's Jordan Malcolm in the number in the number 35 in the 19 McLaren. Oh, look who's entered chat. You were spot on with your analysis. What we were talking about before we went on air about the corner naming here, James. Mr. Jones has casually entered the chat. Yeah, no surprise. <laughs> he's sat at home. He's got a night off, I think. He's sat at home all on his Todd, I believe, this evening. Uh, yeah. as well while well, the wife is at work and the kids are out so uh, he's, he gets to sit there and just enjoy the racing in general I think he, you know and and uh, wonder why a circuit's got a track named after him or a corner named after him to be honest mm -hmm. well uh, Craig has also been uh, on the commentary for this last couple of weeks so I have to give him a shout out for that for, for stepping in so thank you very much for that Craig very much appreciated, but Sven Demmel has just gone quickest. One minute at 50.376. We're about to hit half time in this qualifying session. For those newcomers to the JP Broadcasting Network, thank you very much for joining us. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, but also, uh, for those new to this GT Ford series that we've run, this is our fourth season now. Uh, the format is tried, tested, and it's proven. So if it ain't broke, don't fix it. 15 minute qualifying session we've got a 15 minute sprint race and then we'll have a feature race which is 45 minutes long mandatory pit stop 50 percent maximum fuel and also the top 15 results will be inverted for the feature races uh, again well there's gordon hauger who has switched to the porsche he's uh, making his way uh, towards Lagos at turn three. Very tight and very deceptive corner. Of course, there are sausage curves that these drivers have to avoid here, James. And that's another thing you've got to have your wits about with you. Yeah. Sausage curves are a killer. And it's going to be one of them where they've got to take all or they've got to take none. You know, you, you either ride completely over it or you just leave it well alone. Craig, oh, tell a lie. He's got the missus next to him, as he's referred to her as the light bulb. She's just had her hair done. She's very bright. I've got to be honest, he's saving on electric bills, is Mr. Jones at the moment. So, uh, with his wife sat next to him with a bright blonde hair. So, that's why he sat there with his wife this evening. I'm sure they're enjoying listening to the GT4 commentary while I'm sure she's probably wishing that they would just sat down and watch the film or something yeah well in the meantime with six minutes to go Sven Demmel uh, quickest again out of anybody in the second sector but on that particular occasion didn't improve on lap time but there we have uh, Gordon Hauger in the Porsche currently running P8 on a 1 minute 50.988 the uh, highest place dam at the moment the number 99 of SAS Racing's Richard Jones in the Bimmer. So very, very good job. I like the fact that he's decided to keep the good old uh, BMW M Motorsport livery as Kim Andre Bjorklund now just retakes provisional pole position by next to nothing. Nine one thousandths of a second, one minute fifty point three six nine. So at the moment it's uh, Bjorklund, Demel, Scarrett, who's been complaining of some troubles with regards to his braking foot in the chat. Bremer is fourth ahead of Jordan Malcolm. Anders Lilliorde and Tor Anders Bourbon uh, mean that the uh, duo, well, that has just quickly changed because their fellow uh, Norwegian from the Ragnarok Team Vikings crew, Marcus Gisdal, has just gone P6 in the Mercedes. So the times are changing as the track evolves. Uh, around about 22 degrees Celsius air temperature, 22 degrees track temperature and hopefully Richard Jones might be able to improve. Chris Barnes from Triple P Racing White is currently in pit lane. Mulder Clive has gone on an out lap. And every one of the 28 runners tonight here, James, have all set a lap time in qualifying. Yeah, Stuart Pearson's at the back end, as we can see. Richard Jones just going off through Lagos there. 
as well. That track map, I have decided it is the wrong way. They are going around the circuit the wrong way. So I'm not entirely sure why that is the case, to be honest. I really cannot tell you what that, that situation is and why they're heading. Because this is, should be the left hand or a tour VIP, which it is. And then they yep. go round again up the hill to the left hand side up into Samson. Whereas if you look on the track map, the yellow there has got him going up through Portamal, the left way. So I will deal with that. Well, not I can't really do a lot. It's not my software to call that to have that issue. No. There's there's probably a bug in the iRacing uh, platform at the moment. There are a couple of concerns that have been uh, raised on social media in the last 24 hours that I've noticed. Mm. So that could possibly be one of them. Um, but we do know that they are running around the circuit in the correct direction as per the track map that I don't downloaded. So, uh, yeah, let's see if uh, Mr. Jones can uh, improve. He is currently the highest placed am, I think, in qualifying so far as Jordan Malcolm uh, decides to pit. Yeah, he is. He's in the pits now. Kim Andre Bjorklund is still out in front. Dan Lewis is in 27th place for the Triple P Racing Porsche. He's in the Triple P Racing Black. Got greens on the board as well. So Dan getting used to the car this season. He is, doesn't normally drive GT4s. He's normally in the little Cleos. So for him to jump into the, the big boys as such, bar a GT3, I think he could be on a very learning experience this season. Yes, steep learning curve is probably an understatement. He's he's got a lot he's got to get through uh, to understand the cars. But yeah, I mean, going from a Clio to a GT4 is a big jump. No matter how you how you look at it, uh, Sven Demmel again is with that BMW is really really rapid in the second sector, um, and just seems to be the case that in sectors one and three, Demmel again. Well, he's going to be crossing the line very very shortly. Yeah, 150. Yeah, that was a bit of a slower lap for uh, Sven Demmel in the uh, in the BMW. But we're coming down to the final couple of minutes here in qualifying here, James. Uh, several drivers in the pits. Uh, Malcolm, Barnsey, Amundere, Didod also in the pit lane. I think, you know, it's a lengthy lap here in Portugal. Mm. Um, so I think it's going to be a case of, yes, qualifying is going to be crucial for the sprint race coming up after this. The feature race is going to have a life all of its own. Yeah, I think um, 45 minutes is going to be interesting here on 50% fuel. I think that's going to be the thing. They're going to have to really kind of... I don't know how important the fuel saving situation is going to be. Now, normally, me personally, I just run the car out until it's dry. Then I go in the pits when the spotter says, hey... Get in here, son, because otherwise we're going to be out of fuel. Um, so I normally sort of go in then. I don't really do much fuel saving, but these guys are a little bit more experienced than I am. So it'll be interesting to see how much of a part it plays here this evening. I think that's one of the things we can look out for. Yeah, well, I think the uh, I think the most taken aback anybody was was Kim Andre Bjorklund's run at Twin Ring Motegi last season, mm. which was... Uh, I, I think the most unbelievable thing that I've seen someone actually be able to do in a GT4 here on iRacing. But uh, we are coming down to the final few seconds. 30 on the time and left to go here in time qualifying. And there is the points leader, Sven Demmel, still trying to improve, not improving in sectors one and two. He is going to pop. Well, I don't know if the server's going to time out. He's going to cross the line with about 15 to go. So that was a 1 minute 50.521 from Sven Demmel. And he's called time and qualifying. A lot of people now deciding to go into pit lane as the counter time's on down. There's uh, Torbjorn Mele, and that is it for the session. Zero on the timer, and that means that Kim Andre Bjorklund for the sprint race for round three of the JPB GT4 Global Challenge has been completed. So Norwegian takes pole position alongside points leader Sven Demmel on the front row. Alexander Scarrett and Ewan Bremer on row two, Jordan Malcolm and Anders Liliorde ran out row three ahead of uh, Tor Anders Berven and Marcus Giesdahl completing the top four rows. Ketel Larsen and Gordon Hauger ran out the top ten. 
with an all am front row that's row six richard jones and david corpas on 11th and 12th respectively they're followed up by miles owens and chris barnes on row seven simon Maldeclive and rob williams row eight stefan Meles, tobion mele ike Legui, and uh, stuart rice round out the top 20. Jesus Amundere, Vegan Olsenmeer, Rachel Hoff, Magnus uh, Dyrdor, Chris Evans, Daniel Lewis, Stuart Pearson, and Per Havad Hofstad round out the 28 strong grid here at the Autodromo Internacional do Algarve in Portimao for round three. So we are just waiting for the points leader, Sven Demel, to line up on the grid. But as always here, James, a lot of colour here in the GT4 Global Challenge here on JP Broadcasting. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's going to be really interesting. This first sprint, of course, is definitely going to be exciting as well because obviously they need to get points as much as they can and then the reverse grid kicks in and... Yeah, it's going to be very, very interesting. I think I'll be interested to see how many of these 28 can get to the end of both races here because it could get quite tight. Yep, it is going to be a full rolling lap. So once the Porsche pace car has peeled into the pit lane, of course, the uh, upcoming calendar next week, we'll be heading to Spa-Francorchamps for round four. Road Atlanta will mark the halfway point of the season on the 24th of April. Then we go to Hockenheim, Brands Hatch, Grand Prix circuit, Road America for round eight. Alton Park without the uh, Britain chicane will be round nine on the 22nd of May. And then the Silverstone Grand Prix circuit will conclude this season, season four of GT4 action here on JP Broadcasting. There is a lot of action still to come over the coming days for the remainder of this week and some favorites and some uh, some new additions that we've recently added to the broadcasting uh, programming here at JPB, but there are the two at the sharper end of the pro table here. Devil has got a nice little cushion at the moment, but Bjorkland looks racy in that Porsche like he always has done. Yeah, but Craig Jones has summed it up well in YouTube chat. This is probably the smartest thing he said all night. Based on the last two weeks, Demel will win. It's going to be tough for Kim to stop him. Definitely will be. Yeah, especially someone who knows that BMW M4 GT4 very, very well and has used it to great prowess and has extended a nice little bit of an advantage in the championship standings. But we are still a fifth of the way, we've got a fifth of the way through this championship. They're still, including this round, eight to go. That's a total of 16 races. So anything is possible, folks. Um, I mean, I've seen it where people have, uh, in, in IRL championships, been at the bottom end of the top 10, and they've come through on the last race of the last round of the championship and come through to win it. So. I'm uh, keeping my fingers crossed that we're going to have a great Titanic battle all the way through the season. Yeah, but, I'm uh, sure we will, mate, to be blatantly honest with you. I don't think there's any need that there's anything saying that we won't. These guys are going to be going at it. You've got the likes of Jordan Malcolm, who's never going to give up. You've got, you know, the Norwegian contingency as well. It's going to go off. It, it's just going to be an electric season, I think. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. They've just gone through the uh, timing beam for sector two as they're going to be uh, heading into the likes of Portimao Sagres very very shortly but 28 cars on the grid is it going to be the case that uh, well Sven Devil is trying to light up the rear tyres get a little bit of temperature he nearly spun himself off the track there on the formation lap but we are waiting for the Porsche pace car to peel off the circuit as they will now come out of Galp and uh yeah, it's tender hooks at the moment. Anticipation and tension starts to build. Yeah, Demel, as Craig rightly said in the chat there, James, has been bossing it the last couple mm. of weeks, but it's going to be interesting when the pace car peels in. Yeah, because I think Kim Andre is going to bolt. I, I would be very surprised if he leaves them too long. Well, there you go. That answers my question. Yeah, he's doing a similar right now because the red lights have ignited on the starting gantry. We're set to go green here at Portimao for round three, race one. Red lights on the gantry. Bjorkland has got the jump on Demel as they head down the dip into Primera for the first time. Lights are out, we're underway and racing in the sprint. 
Bremer looking up the inside of Bremer going through into Primera. Now into the right-hand kink before the hard-breaking zone into Lagos here at turn three. And Bjorklund neatly covers up off Demel. And Yone trying to get through on Malcolm for P5. Corpass at the moment in the Lecce Sim Racing number 59. Mercedes has got, or did go up into ninth, but has tumbled down to 14th in the meantime. Side by side for fifth position. Liliorde and Malcolm are in, intertwined into battle. Liliorde gets through. Bourbon might have the run on Malcolm very, very quickly. But Kim Andre Bjorklund here, James, got a nice little getaway. Did a bit of a sim nor managed to put the pedal to the metal and leave Sven Demmel in his wake. Yeah, he definitely did, but Demmel's come straight back at him. He hasn't got very far, mind you, and Demmel's come straight back at him again. So he's not really got that far away. Alexander Scarrett and Iwan Bremer, they're also going side by side once again here with Liliorde and Jordan Malcolm. Marcus Gesdell, Tom Anders Bourbon there. We've got Richard Jones leading the AMS. He's in the mix with Simon Modikliev and Modikliev down in 12th, but up three plus. Places. So a very tight start from where they was originally, but Kim Andre Bjorklund, Sven Demmel trying to make the move. Yeah, and uh, Demmel right in the wheel tracks of Kim Andre Bjorklund as we are heading towards concluding the opening lap of this 15 minute sprint race. And they come through the final corner at Galp over the crest. And Demmel's in the wheel tracks. Scarrett in third. Bremer, Liliorde. Malcolm runs out the top six. As we complete the opening lap, will Demel go for the move down the dip into Primera? Thinks better of it, waits for the opportunity. And just getting through this first lap is a, is a mission all its own here, James. Uh, Jesus Samundare from Lecce Sim Racing has already ended up in the pit lane, uh, having started 21st. There's a good what reason the, for uh, that. Right, OK, let's have a look at this one. Teammate of... Uh, Just runs wide. It doesn't look like he's got much going on, but then he's been off the side of the circuit there. So wherever that... Oh, that was with Gordon Hagen, David Corpus. Whoa! Oh, dear. So, did him under a tag the back of Gordon Hauger, possibly. Well, here's David Corpus. Well, it was the, it was the Mercedes that went around, and that was Corpus oh. that I think... Uh, Amanda Race has lost it on his own. Held on the brakes. There's Hauger, possibly, I think. Yeah, there is. And Hauger waits to rejoin. Hmm, strange. They've had a little bit of a sliding moment between a lot of them, unfortunately, on that one. Too many, uh, too many beans in the right foot. Department, yes, of course. Of course, I completely concur with that one. But Alexander Scarrett has closed on in on Bjorklund and Demel in the battle for the race lead. So at the minute, the top three covered by nine tenths of a second. Into the next right hand, and they go down the dip. So they'll have uh, come out of Sagres now through into Galp and across the line. They'll go once again. It's a long run to the start finish line here at uh, Portimao. And now we see the closing speeds. Lap two completed onto lap three. Bjorklund and Demel closely packed, about two tenths of a second apart, but Demel. Uh, losing a little bit of momentum through Primera and now on the run down to Lagos and yeah Scarlett looking very very menacing Bremer battling away with Liliode for fourth and fifth respectively Malcolm's uh, about 1.3 seconds back and he's got a bit of a gap between himself and Marcus Kiesdahl from Team Rogers Ragnarok in the highest placed Mercedes he's ahead of Tor Anders Bourbon the Team Viking Thor's BMW Richard Jones has just lost the position to Simon Mulderclive. There you see the uh, number 32 Sim Racing Norway Bill of, of Motorblog and Aston Martin ahead of the SAS Racing BMW, but Jones still leading comfortably. Uh, Lecuy in the next placed um, car, the Lurchus Academy 84 BMW is in second and has got Vegard Olsen Lear up the inside. That's a great move if the Norwegian pulls it off, but they managed to go through the crest. Uh, just uh, decides to neatly block that off. So they're going over, I think, heading towards Portimao. There's Rachel Hoff in sixth place in the Anne Pass behind Stuart Rice, teammate at Blue Sky Esports. 
Uh, great to see them uh, pairing up and also in the uh, nicely livery Porsches. Mm, their, their livery does look cool to be fair. I quite like the, the purple on the back. I think it looks quite smart to be fair to them. Stuart Rice was closed up on dry rod before obviously with Olga uh, also Leah in front and Ika Luque in front of them in the BMW. Richard Jones has kind of escaped a little bit. That battle with Monokliev was obviously um, a pro and an am fight. It wasn't an am fight. So Richard Jones still leading the am lead there. Bjorklund still got the front from Demo, from Scarlett, from Bremer. Bremer's got a little bit loose there as well, and he's got now uh, Liliorde coming right at him here. Yeah, Liliorde last time around, I think, set fast in that race. I was looking on the inside. This is down. This is the run down to Tore Vip. And is Liliorde going to go late on the brakes up the inside? No, he's not going to think that he, he thought better of it. Just thought, you know what? There's going to be other opportunities. They're going to go over the crest here in the right-hander for the left-hander before the next double right, which leads us into the second race at Samsung. Uh, before we head into the aforementioned named Craig Jones corner. Uh, so over the crest again, a lot of ele elevation changes. It's up and down. It's a bit of a roller coaster here at Portimao here, James, but that's, that adds a little bit of character to the circuit. Yeah, I think when you're, you know, you're basing it off Sebring, which is just pure flat, or, you know, so a couple of others, Qatar is another one that's just flat. To have this makes it great because they've got uphill brake quins to contend with. And you can see Liliorde and Bremer nearly getting it all wrong there. So they've got to be a little bit careful before they can carry on fighting. They've got to let their cars settle down again and make that move going forward. So it does endear to that. It gives them different lines because everybody takes different lines into different corners. And whatever works for you might not work for somebody else. So I think the fact that it goes up and down like a roller coaster is great. Yeah, they've also got Jordan Malcolm closing in on the one uh, in the uh, one nine McLaren who started fifth in the class, uh, lost the place to Lily all day early doors. But we are past the halfway point of this sprint race as Chris Evans battling away with the likes of uh, Lequeuie in front, uh, off behind. Stuart Rice has now made his way up to P3. So has managed to make a nice little move into the final seven virtual rostrum in the AM classification, but Evans very, very close to the back bumper through Primera on Lequeuie. Nearly went into the back bumper of the 84 BMW. Could have turned it around. Yeah, he's going to have to try and remember, obviously, that Lequeuie is going to break. He needs to make sure that he's not too close to him, really. He wants to obviously get hold of Stuart Rice, so we can understand that as they're continuing to fight. But he's got to get past the guy in front before he can get near Stuart Rice. That's the thing. Back up front, we've still got this Liliorde, Bremer, Malcolm, Gesdale, Tor Anders Bourbon, Kettle Larson, Chris Barnes battle. And they're still going at it here as well. Two, four, six, seven cars nestled in. So this could be where the action could come from as well. And I'm quite excited to see how this oh, one pans out. Touch on the back mm. bumper of Lily Orde by you and Bremer. That allows Malcolm to get through. So Malcolm through to fifth. Uh, 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 just a, a little bit of a mistake. And Malcolm's now going to look up the inside of Lily Orde. Thinks better of it. But Lily Orde, <laughs> well, Malcolm decides, well, we said about the sausage curves being something to avoid. Jordan Malcolm used that a little bit to his advantage and nearly got up the inside of Anders Liliordo to get through. Yeah, this is like, like we said, though, it's basically all or nothing. You, you can't yeah. kind of half-heartedly go over the sausage curves. You've got to either full straddle or take them full, but you can't do that. And Malcolm was showing, you know, the fact that he did manage to straddle one and he did manage to get a full one in and he made trouble get in the position out of it. Fair play to him. But these guys having a right little ding-dong here and it's going to be quite impressive to see how they turn out over the next five minutes. Yeah, you and Bremer needs to be a little bit more precocious on the brakes going into Primera because he was nearly in the back bumper of Jordan Malcolm. In the meantime, at the front end of the field, Kim Andre Bjorklund is nearly six tenths of a second ahead of Alexander Scanet. Sven Demmel is currently P3. So, and here's the uh, freight train. Barnsey, I think it's just, yes, it's just a nose to head of Ketil Larsen in the 46 Mercedes. So Barnsey, who at one point earlier on the season, I think it might have been on media day, he was actually running the front end of the field with feature ones. Mm -hmm. uh, so Barnsey in the 245 Triple P racing wide. Uh, people wondering 
why is he switched to Porsche? Well, he was in a Mercedes last season, but uh, he's really been enjoying uh, having this new challenge of a different car, hasn't he? Yeah, he has, and he's teamed up with uh, Rob Williams for the Triple P race in white. As I say that, I think uh, Rob... Oh, dearie me. Oh, I'm sorry, Rob. Um, right, as you're just about to big the guys up. Did he do this all on his own? He's run wide. He's hit the accelerator. Good night, Vienna, for Mr. Williams. Um, so, yeah, we had teamed up with Rob and Pro and Am chat team and literally they're going to be working together all season. Both gone into the Porsche, both part of the Triple P AMG team, if I remember correctly, but obviously AMG Mercedes. They can't obviously have that because they're not in an AMG, so they've switched over to the Porsche this season. Yeah, another one who's also switched from McLaren to Porsche is Stefan Mellis and the Bounty Hunter XX racing car, the number 54, currently ascending 12th. Uh, at the moment in the category in this race we still have three and three quarter minutes to go but alex scarrett is closing in on kim andre bjorkland uh was about three and a half tenths of a second behind with the brightest wheels you will ever see on the gt mm. especially if google maps was uh, showcasing that if it was ever enjoyed in the racing service um but yeah scarrett again uh, despite having the dramas with regards to braking issues, he's still managing to put in a pretty good performance. And being ahead of the current points of Sven Devil, it's no mean feat. Mm. It definitely isn't. But Sven is entitled to a rough week. You know, he, he's done really well over the last two weeks. And he's, he's entitled to having this rough week is entitled you know if Algarve if Algarve's not his circuit then it's not your circuit fair play carry yeah. on you know go to the next one so for him I, I think you know he he'll be up there anyway near the front and I think he's just got to realize that he doesn't have to rush stuff however one man that is dropping like an absolute rock is Kettle Larson I think Larson has got a disconnect because all of a sudden he just disappears on us after the Rob Williams incident that we saw. And then Larson was gone. It was like Harry, somebody had Harry Pottered him. Oh, they got out the magic wand, didn't they? Yes. Well, we are, we are going to very shortly, I think, be heading onto the penultimate lap because the uh, lead drivers have been running at, you know, 150.4, 150.3. Well, that's been the case with Kim. Just started one minute. One, one more. I think there's, yep, so uh, there's one more. Go. Yeah. Yeah, it's going to be this and one more. So uh, Sven Demel putting in the fastest lap of the race. So one minute, 50.282. We're uh, on board with uh, Rachel Hoff from Blue Sky Esports, uh, currently running still P6. She's had a podium, uh, funnily enough, last season, uh, if I remember correctly. So uh, it's good to see that Rachel and Stuart have teamed up. As you said, that wonderful, uh, nice little bit of chrome with the with the deep purple uh, is, a, is a really striking livery but then of course Kim Andre Bjorkland multi-time GT JPB GT4 race winner also the man that proved everyone wrong at Twin Ring Tegi late last season mm. uh, which it, it invariably ended up being the final round of the championship um, because we, we we had week 13 didn't we yep. on the high racing we were like thinking well is Red Bull Ring going to happen uh, and it didn't so we called time on the season, uh, basically because we, we had a, a joint uh, consultation with all the drivers in the season uh, at that point, and they just went, yeah, let's leave it as is, ground our champions, and then, uh, you know, got down, you know, knuckled down, belts and braces and, uh, and all ready for this season of the championship. And, uh, yeah, Kim Andre Bjorkland, still having done that, great dynamite start at the beginning of the race is uh, on course to going from lights out to check and flag here james very very convincingly yeah i think he is he's and what's worse is he's doing it rather well nobody else is really getting near kim andre and that's the problem if we brought you up the laps led you'll probably find that kim andre's led them all i don't even think he's even lost out on any there so i think for him he's now going over the line for the final lap of the race and as you can see nobody else has led yep. a single bean no indeed indeed so kim andre bjorkland out of primera for the final time through into the right hander on the approach into turn three here at lagos whereas sven demel is now trying to challenge alex scarrett for that second position 
go through the left-hander here at four. That's the uh, blast up to Tony Whip at turn five. But, yeah, every single lap has been led so far. We're on our ninth and final lap. We've got the uh, feature race coming up next. As Demel a little bit harder on the brakes and a little bit later on the brakes in comparison with uh, Alexander Scarrett. Going through into Tony Vip now into the next left-hander. At six and then into the right at seven for the right at Samsung at turn eight. And then it's going to be uh, going up the incline again, heading into, well, over the crest, then down the dip into the fast left-hander here at Craig Jones for the run through into the double right, a very deceptive double right, I might add, here at Porti Mao. And then you use a very different line taken by Kim Andre Bjorklund, which allows Scarrett to close on in. And then it's down the dip into the left-hander here for another left-hand hairpin for the run through Sagnes. And then into Galp, so the timer has already hit zero. It hit it a long, long time ago, I think, before we'd even hit turn three at Lagos. But it is going to be next to nothing between the top three because out of Sagres for the final time. Down through into Galp we go. And then it's going to be oh, uh, at this point through into Galp. Kim Andre Bjorklund going very tight to the apex to get the run out of the final corner. And it's going to be over the crest. Kim Andre Bjorklund takes first blood here at Portimao. Wins by half a second ahead of Alexander Scarrett. Sven Demel rounds out the top three. It's going to be Anders Liliorde that takes fourth ahead of Jordan Malcolm, Ewan Bremer, and then Marcus Giesdahl. It's going to be Richard Jones for SAS Racing that wins in the AM class, and it's going to be by a country mile ahead of Vegard olsen Lear, who crosses the line now. Stuart Rice for Blue Skies Esports. Rounds out the top three ahead of Lurches Academy, Zika Lui, with uh, Chris Evans and Rachel Hoff rounding out the top six. Magnus uh, Dirod for Team Vikings, Ragnarok, uh, then takes seventh ahead of David Kopas with Stefan Mellis and Daniel Lewis rounding out the top ten in the class. Stuart Pearson and Per Havard Havstad rounding out uh, 11th and 12th with Torbjorn Mele uh, completing the top 13. Uh, Rob Williams, well, Unfortunately, his race came to an abrupt halt just after the halfway point has been in the pit lane for seven minutes. Uh, Jesus Amundere, uh, well, we lost early doors and didn't see him again. But, no. <laughs> yeah, well, let's have a look at the results for race one of round three here at Portimao for the JPB GT4 Global Challenge. Uh, Kim Andre Bjorklund winning, winning by just under four and a half tenths of a second. Head of IGL Coatings and Sandy Traffic's uh, Alexander Skarret. Hugh Jass's uh, Sven Demel completes the top three and still holds on to that lead in the championship standings, probably by a little bit of a less margin than he was coming into this round. Jordan Malcolm finishing behind Anders Liliorde in the battle for fourth. Ewan Bremer, Marcus Giesdahl, Tor Anders Berven. Chris Barnes ran at the top nine. Richard Jones completes the top 10 and wins in the AM class in the number 99 SAS Racing BMW M4. Vegard olsen Lear and Stuart Rice complete the top three uh, in AM, rounding out the top 12 overall. Simon Moldekive in 13th, head of Ica Lukui, with Chris Evans completing the top 15, ahead of Rachel Hoff and Magnus Dyrod, who complete the top 17 finishers out of the 28 cars that we had start this 15-minute sprint race. Mm. And we now have a little bit of a calm before the storm because here are the rest of the results. David Corpus, Stefan Mellis and Daniel Lewis ran at the top 20. Head of Stuart Pearson, Per Havard Hafstad, uh, Gordon Hauger not having a great run in the number 71. Uh, Sim Racing Norway crew, uh, Torbjorn Mele, Miles Owens, uh, Ketia Larsen and Rob Williams with uh, Jesus Samundere rounding out the grid. But we've got that five minute warm up, a nice little bit of calm before the storm of uh, the feature race with the top 15 inverted here, James. Again, um, strategy we know is crucial. We've talked about it. We've waxed lyrical about it so often. And Chris Evans from Triple P Racing, black of the number 12 Porsche is going to be at the front row with Lurchus Academy's Ike Lukuri alongside. So Bjorklund's got a lot to do uh, from 15th, Sven Demel from 13th on the grid. Um, anything's possible in a feature, isn't it? I think that's the thing, it is. And the, 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 the kind of equaliser 
is the pit stops. We know Kim's very good at saving fuel and dealing with his fuel. We know Sven's very quick. You know, Scarrett's yeah. in there as well. Liliore, Malcolm, all of them five. I've seen Malcolm fuel save his head off in a cup car to the point of where he crossed the line in first and he was chugging as he went over the line while everybody else had to pit. He saved something like two laps of fuel or something ridiculous like that. So he's very good on his fuel as well. So I think the way that this is going to pan out could be very, very interesting. Yeah, we've got just two minutes of the warm-up left to go for this, uh, before we have the 45-minute the, the feature race. So, as I said, mandatory pit stop. Top 15 are inverted. This is, an, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. We, we've we've run this format so many times. The drivers seem to love it. We seem to love it as well. We love it as well, James. But it's always nice to mix up things, you know, put a little bit of... Uh, spice in the mix so to speak because as they do say the variety is the spice of life mate yeah it is and we did that last season by whacking the two night races in um we haven't yeah. scheduled the night races in at the moment i'll have a chat with rob who's working alongside me as admin and see if we're going to drop a night race in there but at the moment it's just as it was it seems to be working and they seem to be loving it you know we looked at gt4 lmp3 that didn't go down too well you know so i think overall as you say if it ain't broke don't fix it and you can meddle with it too much but we've we've kind of left it alone this season we we've just gone hmm, as as you were yeah i completely agree i think it's just it's a tried and tested format yeah, a night race would have been great, but um, I've, I've just seen in the GT4 drivers chat, Stuart Rice and Ike Lecuie loving having a bit of side-by-side -side action, you know, in this. And that's what I love about GT4 racing. It's production base, you know, okay, they're built to race on a, on a racetrack, but they're nothing like a GT3 car. They're that, they're that entry-level tier, folks, that if you want to get involved in sports cars, in sim racing, GT4 is one of the best learning grounds that you can have. And, and, and a lot of people, James, do actually stay in GT4s for a bit more time before they go into GT3s and go, actually, I love the GT4s a little bit better because you can really, really hustle the car along. Yeah, some people just stay within the GT4 class. You know, it's like anything. People generally will, when you say to them, how do I get quick in iRacing? They turn around and go, stay with one car, you know, We've got the likes of John McCutcheston, who's, who's six and a half K. He's probably driven the SR10 for as long as he's been on the service, you know, and, and yeah. that's that's it. It's staying with the cars that you're aware of and you know. Yeah, well, here's the grid for the feature race for round three of the JPB GT4 Global Challenge. Chris Evans and Ike Lecuy on the front row. Simeon Moldeclive and Stuart Rice on row two with Vegard olsen -Lear and Richard Jones on row three. Chris Barnes, Tor Anders Bourbon. Marcus Giesdahl and Ewan Bremer ran out the top 10. Row 6 is Jordan Malcolm and Anders Liliorde. Get you through the uh, the remainder of the grid as we are waiting for everyone to grid on up. Sven Demon and Alexander Scarrett will ran out the uh, top 14 places with Kim Andre Bjorklund, our sprint winner, starting 15th. He'll be joined by Rachel Hoff on row 8 with Magnus Eidod. David Corpus running out the top nine rows. Stefan Mellis, Daniel Lewis complete the top 20 ahead of Stuart Pearson. Per Havard, Hafstad, uh, Gordon Hauger, and Torbjorn Mele running out the top 24 positions with Miles Owens, Ketil Larson, Rob Williams, who said it's time to go to work in YouTube chat. will be joined by Jesus Amundere on the back row of the grid. We're going to see what Rob will be able to do from that far back. Uh, you know, he's got to use some strategy. He's got to use some technique. He's got to use his, a little bit of everything here, Alex, to start moving that car forward. He's got, a, he's got a tough mountain to climb. You know, if he gets 10th in class, top five if he can, fair play to him. But it's a tall order with the field in front, especially with the likes that he's got five of them within the top 10. <laughs> Yeah, I completely agree there, James. It is just so difficult to read what is going to happen in the race itself. So we have got 45 minutes. We are going to go to the Arden Forest. 
Could there be rain on the cars in Belgium at Spa Francorchamps? I sincerely hope so. Because I've been over to Belgium for three weekends back to back, and one of them we had rain, we had wind, and we had hail. It was a bit like the, the 24 hours of the Nürburgring Nordschleife back in, I think it was 2015, when everyone was on slicks. But could there be rain? There is a possibility. You never, never know, folks. Especially with that Belgian microclimate and. Uh, yeah, I think the drivers might have to watch themselves, James, because we have got open rain on that, haven't we? Well, it is, but it, it, we're still waiting for final confirmation if it's coming to GT4. I've seen recently oh. people testing rain in GT4s, and they were doing it within the test drive sessions that you can do when the service is offline. So I think right. it's not definite, and we're waiting, and... I'd loved for them to bring it in, you know, and yeah. but they've stuck it in their main used cars, the GTPs, the GT3s. They have put it in the Formula Fords for the rookies to get used to, you know, the, the, and they haven't put it in the likes of the GT4s, the likes of Clio's, and it, it's going to be interesting if it does come. So I think I, all I need to say now to retract my previous statement, say watch this space, because yeah. when it hits... When well, it, it, no, it, it, that's the thing. It's too late. Yeah, when it, when it were here, it'd be amazing. You know, you saying about Belgium's multi-climate, mate. I went to Edinburgh last, just before COVID, and literally, I walked from one end of the high street to the other. We had sun, rain, hail, snow, and wind. By the time I'd walked the high street of Edinburgh, how long was that? Fifteen minutes. If that, yep, literally, if that, it was insane. Me and my wife's business partner's husband were you know walking down going what the blinking hell is going on here we had it all in edinburgh <laughs> i can tell you that much so if edinburgh's got their own microclimate you can guarantee belgium has but come on let's get the rain for the gt4s yeah indeed and when that happens my goodness all the drivers in for a bit of a shock right pace car pulling away into the distance and it is going to be chris evans and ica lecuri that will be on the front row Controlling 14 rows, including themselves, of course. 28 cars. We're set and ready under Sada's orders for Ooh. race two of round three. <laughs> and Chris Evans has already decided to bolt. And not only him, but Mulder Clive has done so too. So they all get up to full racing speed. Lights are on. Evans is at full chat. As we head down the dip into Primera, lights are out as the feature race gets underway here at Portimao. Jones looking up the inside of Lecuey, who's just spun into oncoming traffic. And I hate to think what's happened behind. Have there been a couple of cars caught out? Olsen Leah, uh, I think, did get caught up as Lecuey spun around. I'm not too sure if there was a little bit of an assist. We're going to have a look at the replay from the helicam going into Primera. Jones up the inside. The Kiwis has lost it all on his own, and Olsen Lear gets a tag, and he's spun around. Yeah, but where did Olsen Lear end up? My, my fear is Gordon Haig's done the same thing he's done again as he did in race one and spun that Porsche up. He's trying to go free wide, which I'm, I'm sorry, oh. you can't be doing that right at the beginning. Amandari was in there, Kettle Larson was in there, Vigard Olsen Lear, obviously, as we've seen, go off the track. You. you You've got to be erring on the side of your thought process of, right, I've got 45 minutes here. I don't need to go free wide in turn one. Sven Devil yeah. is exactly where he is at the beginning. He's still in the same position. Yeah, exactly. It's it's about just not chancing it. You, you, you can throw the Hail Mary, throw caution to the wind, and then... As we saw, Lecuey ran wide, hit the turf on the outside of the corner, through Primera, spun him around, Olsen Lear, unsighted, had nowhere to go, bang, gets caught, gets turned around. But, yeah, that just goes to show already, uh, Diodot has dropped as well behind Olsen Lear, as Evans trying to break the toe of Mulder Clive as we're about to complete the opening lap. So Evans still leads the way in the number 12 Triple P uh, racing black Porsche being chased down by Sim Racing Norway's si uh, Simeon Maldekive. Uh, Richard Jones in P3. Here comes Barnsley up the inside of Malcolm. 
And that's through at Primera. That's the battle for P10. Kim Andre Bjorklund oh, had to get out of dodge very, very quickly. Looking around the outside at Marcos in turn three. Are you kidding me? Kim Andre Bjorklund, high wide and handsome around the outside of Malcolm. Through turn three gets the move completed by four. As Sven Demel also looks up the inside of the 1-9 McLaren heading into Torivit. Yeah, he tried that. Malcolm is looking menacing. He's trying to get a hold of Demel. What he really wants to do is stay with Sven Demel. You can see Stefan Mellis further back with Dan Lewis, David Corpus, Vigados and Leah in there after being caught up in the beginning. That's Per Havard Hafstad in the other. Aston Martin with Torbjörn Mele in the Mercedes. Williams has moved up six places, believe it or not. So he's on his way through here. Top 10 in class, we said, would be a good run. And now back up front, we've got Gesdal Jones is in the mix with Tor Anders Bourbon, Ewan Bremer, Molde Kliav and Chris Evans still leading the way but under a heap of pressure. Yeah, Evans has just got to keep his nose clean because Mulder Clive, once he sees an opportunity, will be up there quicker than a rat up a drain pipe. Uh, and uh, that, that will be no, that won't that won't take long. And now Mulder Clive, they're coming through uh, uh, Sagles, now into Galp and over the line. As, oh, that's a bit of a run wide there from Evans. That's compromised him a little bit using the off-track area. And Ewan Bremer is keeping to the left-hand side of the circuit. Evans has got Moda Clive in the toe. Moda Clive switches to the outside. In down the dip, through into Primera. Will Moda Clive get the lead? He's going to try and chance it. He's going to run wide. Is he going to lose traction? No, he doesn't. And he neatly gets through at turn two on Evans. And Bremer decides to launch it up the inside through at turn three at Lagos. And he's going to get through as well for second. Yeah, Evans is not under great amount of pressure. He doesn't really have to worry about what's going on in and around him. I think... But Chris, he's just got to use his brain a little bit. Be a little bit smart, because he doesn't have to worry so much at the moment. And the last thing he wants to do is, you know, put himself in a position where he's going to lose a lot more time. Now, was that a... That was a Porsche going up the inside of Richard Jones, I think. That was possibly Kim Andre Bjorklund. And they did bang panels a little bit there. So Modder Clive leads, Bremer in second, Evans, who's leading the AM class. He's got five cars between himself and Richard Jones in ninth. So, at the moment, Chris Evans is leading the AM class. So, as you said, he's just keeping it nice and calm, not making... No, he's not under significant pressure. OK, he can let a few more cars go in front of him, but he's got to minimise that significantly. We're on board uh, with Chris Barnes. He's got Sven Demel around the outside of him, down the crest into uh, the left hand up. And Demel is going to be ahead by a nose. And he's going to be through on him as so they're going to be going up the hill again and then through into uh, Sagres before the run down into Galp. So a nice little, again, just showcasing through uh, Sven Demel how neat you have to be around here at Portimao. We're riding on board with Tor Anders Bourbon from the team Viking Thor crew. Fourth place at the moment, closing in on Chris Evans. But it's got Giesdahl, Scarrett, Liliorde. Liliorde has just put in the fastest lap of the race in 1 minute 51.117. And it's currently sitting in P7. Into Primera they go. Bourbon takes a little bit of a wide line. We now go on board with uh, Bremer, who's got past Maldeclive for the race lead in the meantime. So the Sim Race Sweden eSports driver holding on to the race lead about four tenths of a second ahead of the Norwegian. Evans uh, still holding on to that P3. Head of Bourbon, Giesdahl, Liliorde, Scarrett, Bjorklund, Jones is about 1.4 seconds uh, behind the Norwegian in the number 88 Sim Racing Norway. Molia Klemi, uh, Porsche. Sven Demel now gets through on Jones for ninth place. So as uh, Malcolm and Barnes side by side. I think that's, that's coming out of Torre Vip at turn five. Barnes still trying to keep it towards the outside to get the inside run into the next double oh. right hander. He's going to chance it. Malcolm gives him a little bit of room to breathe as they go through into Samsung and then over the crest. And it's going to be down the dip. Barzi still ahead of Malcolm at the moment as they run down to Craig Jones. But Malcolm's going to get the inside line. He's going to thread the eye of the needle. And then McLaren gets through on the Porsche.
Yeah, he does, but I don't think this is going to be done. Richard Jones is going to find himself tied up with all of this here. The problem for Jones is how many more positions does he want to lose? He's only got three to play with before he gets back down into Rachel Hoff territory. He's not far back, so he can't allow to let up and let off there. I can tell you that much. Dyrod is down here with Miles Owens, um, Jesus Amandari, Ika Luke, Rob Williams. All these guys having a good old little ding dong as Dyrod and Owens were going side by side there now they're dropping down the right hand are is owens gonna hold it he is can he hold it again coming all the way round it seems like he might have to run dyro's trying to go around the outside in that mercedes that's a brave in a car that wants to swap ends as soon as look at you yeah and he's still keeping it there as they come out of galp uh you and bremer has now got nearly a 1.1 second advantage. He's just posted the new fastest lap of the race in 1 minute 50.560 as Die Rod still towards the outside of Miles Owens and gets the job done. Owens deciding to back out of it. He thought, well, I don't want him going around the outside of me and swapping ends as Die Rod gets a little bit of a twitch going through into turn two out of Blue Manor at that point. Who have they got just behind them? They've got Stuart Pearson, haven't they? Stuart Pearson in the uh, second of the SES mm. racing cars currently down in 25th at the moment uh, but Dyrod was uh, did have some stones on him to do that didn't he yeah he definitely did and you got this battle here with Gisdow, Evans, Bourbon, Liliore all swamping Chris Evans at the moment Chris is just sitting there he's, he's I don't know he's like a third wheel at a party you don't need to flash him we've discussed this previously Mr. Liliore, you don't need to flash him. You're there to race. You want to get through. Get through by racing him. If you can't race him... And it's three wide. Oh, Barnsley's been turned around. Barnsley was turned around. I think that was the Liliore that made the contact. And of all the people, Kim Andre Bjorklund, there was a secondary touch. And then Alexander Skarrett gets caught up. Chris Evans loses his rear wing. Kim Andre Bjorkland had the presence of mind to keep a pin around the outside, keep out of harm's way, and it all happened on the inside of him. Yeah, there's the touch. It was a first, then a secondary touch from Anders Liliorde that sent Barnsley around, and that has cost Barnsley the opportunity of an AM class win. It has, and it's also cost Chris Evans his AM class win as well. Evans, unfortunately, now all the way down into seven Sorry, feet. my apologies there. <laughs> You're so excited, mate. Go and run away. Same team, mind you. White and black. Sorry, but, uh, <laughs> yeah. it's Evans Sorry lost Mr. Evans. Yeah, it's Evans lost his rear wing. I don't know if he's aware of that. Um, I'm sure he's just about to be told, though, because that is Mr. Williams up behind him. And I'm sure Rob will say to him, um, Chris, you've got no rear wing on there, bud. No wonder you're struggling. You had the chance to go into the pits, unfortunately. But that... Wasn't the greatest move from Lily all day. He, he, we mentioned that you're not to flash. You know, you get past him on track. He doesn't have to move out your way. You've got to understand that. And if I need a chat with you all again, I will tell you that exactly the same thing. You don't need to flash. And then, unfortunately, the contact happened. And then you're sitting back thinking, well, can that open it up to discussions about whether or not it was intentional? Did he was he trying to bump him out of the way? Whatever that will come of, I'm sure the wonderful world of the stewards will have a look back and issue a penalties where appropriate. Yep, and the two teammates are now side by side because Bjorkman now is up into fourth. Liliode has got past teammate Bourbon for fifth. Um, yeah, sorry about that, Chris Evans and Chris Barnes. My apologies there, just. The adrenaline was coursing through my veins and I was chatting a million miles an hour. But Chris Barnes is has now got past Jordan Malcolm. Nice little move there from Barnsley. And there is uh, Richard Jones who now has in his hands the AM class lead and he's currently running P9 ahead of Sir Demel. Yeah, I think, do you know, Chris Barnes, he, when he's here, He's on the pace and he does so well. But there's just days when he almost looks like he's driving around thinking about his shopping. You know, and, and <laughs> it, it, what he's got to do or what list the wife's going to get him or something. And he has a terrible race. But then he has. Oh, then he has races like this where he, he's doing an absolute incredible job. So fair play, Chris Barnes. You know, you, reco you recovered. You have that bad one, then you recover. And he, he does absolutely amazing. 
David Corpus and Vigard Olsen Leah, they've just swapped places in the AMs. That was a swap for five and fifth and sixth. Yeah. Pearson's, Stuart, yeah, Pearson. yeah, and Miles it's Owens. Owens. It's a Munda Ray is in the pits. Oh dear, what's happened? Right, let's have a look. So Owens and the Munda Ray, there's going to be contact right front to left rear. Owens goes spinning around and he's going to rejoin straight the pass of path of Stuart Pearson. Oh, Deary, deary me. I think a bit overzealous on the turn in there for Mr. Rowans from Sim Race uh, Sweden Esports, wouldn't you think? Yeah. Yeah, he just didn't. He could have opened up the steering a little bit there, James, if I'm completely honest. I'm, I'm wondering, I'm wondering how much further back that took shape and whether or not there was a late move from Mundaway going into the braking zone, which has left Owens doing that. Um, I just don't, unfortunately, think without rewinding the whole thing of whether or not I'm going to quite get there. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure that will be looked at for the lead up to and not the initial contact. Because if you're going to move in the braking zone and you're going to put somebody off, then you're at fault. As we've said previously, don't move in the braking zone. Um, so, yeah, Chris Evans still going around without a rear wing. Needs now got Havard Hafstad behind him. I think Chris... I would take this opportunity to pit, to be fair, but I'm wondering if he knows he's got to get to that half an hour mark to make it to the end of the race. Yeah, um, but then also we've got to think about when are these drivers going to start pitting in. Uh, per Havad Hafstad in the uh, number 474 Aston Martin going alongside Mr. Chris Evans, who's still... Oh, and they rub paint a little bit down the start, finish straight. Mr. Evans has still got no rear wing on that wagon. He's as Hafstad outbreaks himself a little bit, runs a little bit wide, Evans gets back through. Um, yeah, we, we've seen it before. I'm trying to remember who it was that lost their rear wing and decided to soldier on for the remainder of the race just to maybe pick up points last season. I can't remember who it was, but someone was in the same predicament. Marcus Giesdahl now has got Kim Andre Bjorklund, who has been going on qualifying rampage laps. He's just been in the last time round as the number 88. So Bjorklund, not just satisfied with a sprint victory, is gunning for the feature. And Giesdahl is the uh, cork in the bottle here, James. So the minute that Bjorklund gets past, then he can start chasing after Mulderclive and Bremer. And Bremer has got a lead of nearly three seconds up the road from Mulderclive. Uh, who in turn is nearly three seconds ahead of this battle for third place. Yeah, the Dutch has done a great job. He, he's actually take, took the lead and he's done a, an incredible job with it. You know, he's led for four laps, Moldy Clear one led for one, and Evans has led for two as well. So great job from them guys for actually leading. But once Bremer got in front of them, Malcolm's in, Demel's in, half an hour. Give or take, you are just about going to make that. I think now I would expect to see Chris Evans coming in at this point because obviously we reached that half an hour mark. He had to do one more lap, which he has done. Lost the positions I have, Stad. I would expect him in to get that rear wing fitted this time around, but it doesn't look like he's going to come in. He's going around again, is Chris Evans. So he's definitely got some Staley's in his pocket tonight. Yeah. He's been taking his brave pills or had a little bit of Dutch courage before he got into the sim this evening. Um, but that's down to his discretion. But Kim Andre Bjorkman has finally got past Team Viking Ragnarok's number 97 and Marcus Giesdahl uh, doing a pretty so solid job as the number 97 in fourth place. So, and up until the point that, point that um, Kim Andre Bjorkman got past him, however, we've got an inter team little battle here. Rachel Hoff behind uh, teammates of Blue Sky Esports, um, Stuart Rice. But this could be a good result for the team because at the moment they are running 2-3 in the AM class. So they're looking pretty good at the moment with 28 and three quarter minutes to go. So you just got to keep it nice and neat and tidy up there. Yeah, I don't think they're going to do anything silly, mate, to be fair. They, uh, you know, they've known each other. They were racing in... Same team last season. They've come away, obviously, into the blue sky, away from the Triple P banner. So I don't think these would do anything ridiculous that's going to cost them team points. 
you know, I, I think you've got to err on the side of caution at times, and that's what yeah. these guys have got to do, especially when they are off the pace, but they're only four points behind the Triple P Racing Black guys. And, of course, we know how that's turned out for Chris Evans, unfortunately for him, who's further down. Yeah. So Chris Evans and Dan Lewis. Dan's having not a bad one, but he's still behind Evans. So this could be a great opportunity, isn't it? Dan Lewis hasn't got a rear wing either, and neither has Chris oh, Evans. Dear. I'm not entirely sure where Dan Lewis lost that. Ah. So they've both got no rear wings on those wagons, and that's hampering their lap time. Okay, let's have a look. This is the replay with Dan Lewis. Uh, he oh, he's hasn't... just going to lose it on his own, but he'd already lost the rear wing, so there was no aero balance on the back end of the car anyway. No, he's lost so... it. He hasn't got it there either. So where did he... That's a long way back it, on must lap. Be... Because... Yeah, that's... we're on lap... Oh, hold on. This was back oh. on lap four. Oh, oh. tag from the Mercs and... Whoop. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm not sure who that was. It's like a DIY shelf that's gone wrong. Yeah, he probably bought it from Ikea. <laughs> oh, 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 shots just, fired I'm there. Just, I'm just it. saying, I'm just saying, you know what I mean? How many times do we have well, it and it can, falls apart or whatever? Uh, that was David Corpus that hit Dan Lewis, by the way. Okay, so, right, that 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 now pieces the other side of the story. Um... Jesus Amandere is still in the pit lane. He's been in there for over seven minutes, so I think uh, Mr. Amandere is going to... I think that's it. That's time called, and that's going to be a double DNF for the number 19, Lucha Sim Racing BMW. But uh, David Corpus, in the meantime, battling away for fifth in the AM class with Vegard olsen Lea, who uh, unfortunately was the unwilling, well, the unknowing participant in that incident involving uh, uh, Le Cue on the opening corner who uh, lost it all on his own and then yep, Vegard Olsen the had nowhere to go bang, spun around, had a bit of an inadvertent Jim Carter moments uh, through no fault of his own but yeah, I think uh, that's Stefan Mellis in front so this is an opportunity for these drivers to battle away and you look just a little bit further ahead, there's Rachel Hoff and Stuart Rice that have just gone out of shot so this is looking rather interesting for the final two steps on the rostrum in the AM class. And that is between Rice, Hoff, Malice, Olsen, Lea, and Corpas. So that's, that's effectively five cars mm. that could go for P2. They can. We've got Jordan Malcolm on YouTube having screen freezes. Um, and it was oh, about five there. times a lap a second a time safer to park it. Fair play, mate. Fair play, I, you know, you didn't want to end up getting involved with anybody else's there, unfortunately, for Jordan Malcolm. But that's not the first time. Did you not have that last, was it last week? I don't think that's the first time that's happened to you, dear sir. Uh, come on, Joe Bjorklund, the motor clear of uh, battling out. Bjorklund has cleared clear. So I think now it'll be interesting to see what Bjorklund can do. Oh, man, 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 man. Ika there just going down the circuit. Oh, and not all on his own doing there. Mm, that was a Mercedes, that was a Team Vikings Ragnarok Mercedes, wasn't it? I think. Wasn't the wrong team, James. Oh, it might have been Magnus Dyrod. It was, yeah. Helped around, unfortunately, for him. There we go. Olsen Lear, oh. Corpus, side by side, down into turn one. Olsen Lear, lose. He's is got a bit more straight oh. through that second corner. Corpus still held on to it. Mm. But now we've got Rachel off being uh, basically pressurised by Stefan Malhis. And that is the run out of turn four. They're going into Tony Vip now here at turn five. Melas looking for the undercut, gets through. Rachel Hoff doesn't really fight it, but looks for the crossover. <laughs> There's Stefan Melis, because that is, look, mom, I'm on camera, yeah. mom. He's started flashing the lights, <laughs> yeah. but he didn't need to do that because Rachel Hoff is straight back at him. 
through into the next left-hander. They've got the double right coming up, so they've got turn eight coming up now at Samsung. Rachel Hoff trying to go around the outside of Stefan Meles. And that is going to allow Corpus to get into the battle. And Vegard Olsen Leah all down the dip into Craig Jones. Run up towards the double right here at Portimao. Jones is looking towards the inside. Corpus is not too far behind. This is going to be a bit too close for comfort here. Rachel Hoff just loses a little bit of momentum. Corpus is nearly making it three wide. Hoff responds and gets back through. Uh, Melis still takes the tie to line. Corpus very, very close. Mm. A bit too close for comfort to Rachel Hoff's back bumper there. Is it going to he head through uh, Sagnes before the run down the hill into Galp? So a nice move there by Stefan Melis a few corners ago into Toddy Vip at turn five to get through on Rachel Hoff. What could have been a 2-3 for Blue Sky Esports? But we still got we still got half of this race to go here, James, as uh, Stefan Mellis pulls to the right-hand side. Vegard olsen Leah dives into pit lane just past the halfway mark. Yeah, I, I, I think but Stefan Mellis, he's, he's driving well within his capability, and he's another man that's a little bit of a, an enigma, and he can get it right, and he can get it wrong at times as well. So I, I'm glad he, he's getting it right this week. You know, I, I've known Stefan for quite a while, and, and he's, he is literally a carbon copy of Chris Barnes. When he's on it, he's on it. When he's off, yeah. he's like Stilton. It is off, off. You know what I mean? It is, it oh, is proper off. yeah, proper off. You know, like penicillin off. So it, oh, it, yeah. it, it's good to see him up there, and I'm glad he is. And well done, Stefan, for that one. Whether or not he's gone out and practiced, because I know Stefan generally just rocks up and uses the practice session before we start as his weekly practice, because he does so many leagues. I am. I would be surprised if he has done any practice, but it's fair play to see him up there. Well deserved to be up in that third place as well. So um, fair play to him for that one but we've got Gezdal and Moldy Klev still fighting out in third and fourth and they've got Lily Orday and Bourbon the uh, two drivers from uh, Team Vikings Thor right with them uh, Lily Orday has got to really keep it start keeping his nose clean a little bit better than he has done in this race but that's a run wide there from Odeglaiv Gezdal closing in but uh, that closing speed is going to continue. Chris Barnes now dives into pit lane from seventh. Uh, Will Giesdahl. Giesdahl, do not try and put it around the outside of Primera. Thank you very much. Uh, this eye's better of it. One of the so uh, back markers get I think that's Dan Lewis. Oh, he's now got a wing back on the car, uh, having pitted. It is Dan Lewis, yeah. Yep. And there's Richard Jones uh, comfortably leading the AM class by nearly 3.9 seconds. But yeah, good uh, space awareness by uh, Dan Lewis. Uh, just keep out of harm's way and just let this quartet just keep on battling for the final step on the roster. Right. We've got 20 minutes to go still in this feature race. Still all manner of strategies that could be decided, but Ewan Bremer has a 5.1 second lead over Kim Andre Bjorklund. And looking at the lap times, Bjorklund is nearly a tenth and a half of a second quicker. Mulder Clive doesn't need to start doing that, getting a bit twitchy on the back end. Uh, going through out of turn eight at Samsung as Giesdahl's right closing up onto him, going through into Porty Mao. Uh, but <laughs> Billy Yorday again just decides to straight straight line the, the first part of Porty Mao and then get a little bit aggy as in late on the brakes through into that second corner. But Giesdahl putting Mulder Clive under significant pressure here for P3. Mm. Bjorkland is cleared off into this. It's Giesdahl through into Sagnes. Is he going to go through? Oh, nearly a little. There was a little bit of a touch between the mm. pair. Uh, he went for a gap and the door was always closing. That was the problem. And it's closing yep. again. He's had to go and force it. He, he's, he had to force that. But whether or not he had to force it because he was going into the pits, I didn't quite get that manoeuvre as the BMW comes hurtling in and did, Tor Anders Bourbon. Did you see that? Tor Anders Bourbon hard on the brakes. He was very, very close to breaking the speed limit before entering the pit lane. Oh my goodness. As Mulder Clive and Lily Orde start scrapping away over P3. Um, yeah. Bourbon just came in there at full uh, flat chat. It was just like, yep, hello. Hard on the anchors. 
he he would have been he would have been so misfortunate if he'd gone into the back of Keystone going into the pits. That would have been embarrassing. Yeah, it would have been. I want to see if Demel can get Bervin, Jones, and Gisdale here. Gisdale's on only just trickling out. Bourbon's almost out. Where is Demel? Oh, I don't know if he's too far back. I think he might be too far back. He is. Bourbon and Gisdale has survived. Jones didn't survive, though. He's got it into the pits. But then again, he's the only one in his class that has pitted. The arms are led by Stu Rice. He's not pitted. Melis went out and briefly did the uh, his fastest lap. It flashed up there. And he is not pitted either. So it's going to be where Jones comes out in conjunction with the arms when they finish pitting. Yeah, that's going to be the crucial... Crucial deciding factor here, as you've already said there, James. It's just about how Richard Jones now reacts and just just puts in a couple of good laps. You know, they need to be quick, but they also need to be rather, rather tidy mm. uh, in terms of cornering speed, exiting out of the corners, throttle application. You don't want to go too heavy with the beans on the loud pedal because otherwise, as we've seen before, Nicola Kiwi uh, being a prime example of that, having spun out, and then caused the drama. Mulder Clive has just pitted, so that's now released early your day. Uh, I'm going to be interested to see how long, how much longer Kim Andre Bjorklund decides to go in comparison with Ewan Bremmer. Stefan Mellis now leads the AMP class, still yet to pit, and is currently running P4. Rachel Hoff is still running out on the circuit, so she's currently second in AMP, fifth overall. Um, yeah, so it's changing all the time. I mean, I think we could see the last few pit stops, I think, coming in. I mean, Gordon Hauger has yet to pit. He's currently all the way down in 16th place. So he's probably going to be finishing just outside of the top 20. But what happens between the top eight now is very much going to decide the, the tone of the remainder of this race here, James, because we're literally a minute away from hitting two-thirds distance on the timer. Yeah, we've got Demo who's just got up the back end of Modiclev and Gesdal. Both of these have pitted. So for Sven Demo, he's got to be trying to get past the cars in front now because he needs to make that time up. That purpose of pitting early is so you jump the cars when they go in. So when they're in, you go past them. It makes it a little bit more simpler than doing it out on track. The problem is, is Demo's lap now is being not held up by Moldy Clear because Moldy was in, Clear was in front of him. But it's just basically now not an ideal scenario for Demo, especially if Demo's all of a sudden found pace in that car. He really needs Simon to politely move or Demo's got to get the overtake done soon because for Demo to jump, the likes of um, Tobio Mel, Magnus Dyrod, Rachel Hoff, Stefan Mellis, Lily Jorde, Bjorkman and Bremer, he needs to be on it, and he's just being here is not doing him any favours at the moment. But as you say that, he's just launched it up the uh, up the inside of Marla Clive. Uh, Stefan Mellis and Rachel Hoff have now pitted, which means that we have seven drivers still to jump down pit lane. Sven Demmel, when does he pull the trigger on it? That's going to be the interesting thing here, as he's now heading through into Galp. There's uh, Richard Jones, uh, currently P15, but more importantly, he's sixth in the class. But uh, Mellis is... He needs to get Hoff and he needs to get Mellis. And at the moment, he is on the right. You can see him there. You can see Mellis yeah. coming down on the left-hand side. You should see a booming white BMW. You do see that. And he has got through as Richard Jones or Stefan Mellis and Rachel Hoff. And that is what Demel's been trying to do all the way through the race since he pitted 15 minutes ago. And unfortunately for Demel, he got held up by Modi Kliev. So Gesdell is now on his list. But that was what Richard Jones has done, what Demel was trying to do. Overtake people in this class, go in a little bit earlier and jump them on their pits. Yeah. And sometimes by deciding to pit earlier than everybody else, I mean, Stefan Demel pitted on lap eight. 
and we are now on lap number 17. Bremer now lead, the leader now in the pit lane. What will Bjorklund do? Will he go out for another lap? No, he responds and also goes in the pit lane. Liliorde will be the next one to blink. And he dives down to pit lane, so I think we're going to see the last few drivers. I think Dyrod, Mailer and Williams will be pitting very, very shortly here, James, uh, because it's coming down to the wire. Uh, 13 minutes and 10 seconds there is to now. go. Dyrod... Yeah, I would. Th yeah, I think they're going to all pit now, and it's now down to what Sven Demmel decides to do. Here comes Dyrod and uh, a few others. Well, that is uh, that was the so we, yeah. that was Miles Owens. Mail is now pitting. Williams also dives into pit lane. So Gordon Hauger is going to be the last one. So Bremer has already escaped out of the pit lane. 13.5 seconds in the pits. Bjorklund was in the pits for 16.3 and still manages to get in front of Anders Liliorde. I don't so there is think. Uh, Sven Demmel. There's a car somewhere. Fear. There he is. Oh. I guess that did not get your Liliorde. Sven Demmel did not get any higher than what he did. Nevertheless, he's made a good old gain tonight in this second race, isn't he? He's uh, up eight places. Bjorklund up tw uh, 13. So, despite having won the sprint race, he's now 8.3 seconds behind you and Bremer. And with 12 minutes to go, I think it's a mountain too tough to climb for Kim Andre Bjorklund. Bremer has done enough mm. and has made sure he was less than three seconds slower in his pit stop than Kim Andre Bjorklund. So maybe Kim's gone with a little bit of additional fuel for reserve. You just never know. As Bremer timed it absolutely spot on. Well, folks, join us for the next 11 and a half to 12 to 13 minutes to find out who's going to be in this feature at the moment. Sven Demmel is nine and a half tenths of a second behind Marcus Giesdahl as we're with Chris Barnes, who's closing in on tour. Anders Bourbon and Simeon Maldeklive in the battle for P6. Yeah, he's trying to move his way through here. He's down one from where he started, is Chris. But he's trying to make that move forward. And that's always great, as I say. When he's on it, he's on it. When he ain't, he ain't. And you can tell if he's on it because he does great racing like this. Battling away with the likes of Tor and his bourbon. Battling away, away with Mauro Kliev. And now I think it's just on what Barnes is going to be able to do. We're breaking into 10 minutes. So we're only going to have about five, maybe four, maybe five more laps left. Because of how long the pit stop times are. Can this be held on to? Or is Bar Oh, that was risky. Yeah, Bourbon trying to go around the outside at Primera on Mulder Clive. And that's that Barnes he to thread the eye of the needle and get through. Great anticipation there by Chris Barnes in the Porsche. The uh, number 245 from Triple P Racing White. That was a great move. Bourbon just tried to keep it pinned around the outside of Mulder Clive through Primera. It didn't work out. Barnes was there, capitalised, made, the made it work. Now he's going after Mulder Clive and not too far ahead. You've got the battle for fourth place between Giesdahl and Demel. Barnes has got a real good run out of Torre Vip on Mulder Clive. I think the Porsche is going to be a little bit more handy than that Aston Martin at the minute. Yeah, it is. And I do love the fact that the Porsche is almost like a Hot Wheels compared to the rest of these GT4s. It's the smallest one out of all of them. You can see it there from the back end of Bourbon. He literally, Barnes just disappears, you know. And I, and I think going forward, oh, again, different run, different lines. Barnes is going to have the inside. Mulder Clear trying to take the outside, but gets the run on the way down for the next corner. So I think for Chris Barnes, he's doing a great job putting these guys under pressure. Top five? Yeah. Tall order, I think, with Sven Demmel occupying that fifth spot. Oh, Mulder Clive has a little bit of a snap on oversteer. I think Barnsley tagged the back of him, and Bourbon's back through on Barnsley for seventh place. As they're uh, going to be heading down the hill into Galp. Once again, you can see that the front bumper on Barnsley's Porsche has been indented, and now he's got a good run coming out of that final corner. I think he's just pulled out of the slipstream a little bit too early in the 2.45. Uh, Mulder Clive going defensive on Bourbon, who's going to keep to the outside through into Primera. Are we going to see a repeat of what happened on the previous lap? 
Bourbon keeping it pinned round the outside. Is it that's going to open the door again for Barnes if he decides to chance it? He holds station through into turn three at Lagos. Bourbon's hung out a little bit high and dry, high and dry around the outside. Barnes unable to get through out of turn number four. Mulder Clive is still hanging on, but he was all kind of crossed up coming out mm. of turn four. Yeah, it was all a little bit winkly, wasn't he? Wonky donkey there was Mulder Clive. And I think he's just got to be aware or oh, Bourbon's again. Same scenario with Chris Barnes. You know, Bourbon gets too close. Mighty Clive gets it all a little bit peaked on. And then everybody else has to back up behind him, which loses the guy's been momentum to the fact that they've got to go again at him. So it's, yeah, it's tough here. But I, I think the problem is, is once these two get past Simon, it's, I think they will run away with it and, and pull away from him. And, and they can see that now that their opportunity of getting any further up it's just going out the window. Barnes was the quickest on the previous lap. He was quicker than Mulder Club by nearly 1.7 seconds. Mm. Tor Anders Bourbon, high 1 minute 52.9. Mulder Clive, a, a low 1 minute 52.9. So Barnes has got the pace in comparison with the two in front because they're just simply battling away. You know, Bourbon's trying to get past Mulder Clive. Mulder Clive's all over the shop a little bit because the back end of that Aston Martin is very, very loose around certain parts of the circuit. I mean, we saw that coming out of turn number four on, the previous, on this lap. So, Barnsley is in the prime real estate seat. Mulder Clive doesn't... Oh, and Barnsley's going to go into the pits. Is that for a drive-through penalty? I think it might be. Well, we're going to find out very, very shortly here. Because there was absolutely no reason why he should have gone in, as I say, by the looks of it could be a drive through there's a mandari there three two one it is a drive through he obviously hit his incident limits already that's a real shame for chris barnes that really could have been an opportunity for at least p6 sven demel in the meantime has got past marcus keystyle in the battle for p4 uh, kim andre bjorkland has whittled the gap down between himself and ewan bremer uh, it's just under 7.9 seconds, but they have been very much equal on pace. And as Lily Yorde, though, on his previous lap on lap 20, put in a personal best of 1 minute 50.358. And that was the best part of four and a half tenths of a second quicker than the two leaders. So Lily Yorde trying to see if he can whittle that 4.5 second uh, disadvantage down uh, to Kim Andre Bjorklund, but with five minutes and 50 still to go on the timer, plus however much distance we've got left. Um, it is going to be interesting to see, but we are coming down to completing lap number 21 of this race. So I'm just going to keep an eye on the timer now. So five minutes and 30. I think we could have four laps in total. So line has been crossed by Ewan Bremer. One minute 50.394. So yeah, that's going to get, I think that's going to give us four laps, including this one left to run. So we'll be hitting about 25, 26 laps by the checkered here, James. Yeah, I think you're right. I think it's going to be where Demel's going to be able to get and whether or not he can hold Gezdal back. Can Bourbon get past Molde Clev? Richard Jones is comfortable in the arms with Stefan Mellis behind and David Corpus not really making an in inroad. Chris Barnes, Rachel Hoffi, got also Leah, Magnus Dryrod. These guys are battling it out for, ninth, uh, for 13th, 14th, 15th, and 16th overall. That is not AMS. That is just overall. So a great job from all of these guys once more as we continue the fight going into the last four and a half minutes. And Rachel Hoff is closing in on the wheel tracks of Chris Barnes. Down the start, finish straight, but she's got Vegard olsen Lear up the inside, heading into Plumera. Oh, that was very, very close between the pair but Olsen Lear deciding to back out of it. In terms of Hoff, uh, Olsen Lear and Dairod, that is fifth in the AMS that they are battling over because uh, Alexander Scarrett is down in 12th and is the next best placed, at, uh, placed pro driver behind Tor Anders Bourbon. Uh, Stuart Rice has got through on Stefan Mellis. So there has been a change for third in the AMS. Oh, oh. now who was at the top of the circuit? That was Stefan Mellis. That's Stu Wright, as he just put too much. Mellis. Oh, Mellis has been hit by Corpus from behind. Mellis was slow out of the corner. 
Yeah, I'm wondering if he had some form of issue. Did he yeah. change down or change up? He just didn't seem to go anywhere. He just bogged down completely coming out of that turn five at Toddy Vip. Mm. That, that is completely... I'm bewildered by that one. I've never seen that happen three out of turn number five. But the thing was, did he have a slowdown possibly? But now we go back to this battle between Mulder Clive and Bourbon. Mulder Clive trying to break the toe. Bourbon again is going to head to the outside line. How many times does Tor Anders Bourbon need to try and go around the outside to get one up on Mulder Clive? Because every time he's tried it so far, it hasn't worked. And he's run very, very wide off track. They're going to head down into turn three at Lagos. And, well, Kim Andre Bjorklund was able to do it. Tor Anders Bourbon, I'm afraid of the BMW, you weren't able to quite make it stick. Yeah, he's coming through, I think it's he's coming through Sagres now. For the run. No, he's no, he's, he's just come out of Portimao. We are going to be very, very close. It could be one more after this because he's just about to head up the hill and through into the uh, sweeping right-hander uh, here at Sagres. So 15 seconds, so until we hit two minutes. So he's, he might have enough time to make it one and one more. It's going to be down to the wire. 156. Yeah, I think we've got yeah, we've got one more one more lap to go. This is the last lap now. Bremer's timed it. Bremer's timed it to perfection here. What's his lap time across the stripe? One minute fifty point seven eight seven. Last lap is underway. Last lap is underway, folks. Ewan Bremer is gonna pick up a win for Sim Race Sweden Esports. Giesdahl still battling away with Demel in the battle for P4. Bjorklund second, Iliode third. Of course, these results are in some ways provisional because obviously we've got to let... Oh, and Tor Anders Bourbon, I think, has just exceeded his incident limit, so he's gone through for a drive-through penalty as well, uh, which now puts Richard Jones up into seventh place overall. And, yeah, that's not exactly how you want to start the last lap there, Tor Anders Bourbon, exceeding your uh, incident point limit. And that is, that's dropped him behind. Let's see. Yeah, well, yeah. Bourbon's only just, there is Barnsley. There is Barnsley. And Bourbon, Bourbon was due for possibly a top six finish whilst battling away with Mulder Clive. And that's all gone down, that's all gone down the, the toilet for him, I'm afraid, on that one. Um, yeah, the, the second driver to be hit with a drive-through. Barnsley has fallen foul of that, and so has Tor Anders Bourbon. But we are 75% of the way through the 24th and final lap. 20 seconds to go. Ewan Bremer is, has timed this well. Timed this very, well, very, very well indeed. He's done exactly what's been asked of him. And there he is, the uh, Flying Dutchman in the uh, 036 Simray Sweden Esports. Porsche Cayman 718 GT4 timer strike zero as Bremer does the unthinkable Sim Race Sweden Esports win round race two here at round three by a country mile. Ewan Bremer now hits heads to victory lane. Kim Andre Bjorkland, a good night for the Norwegian. First in the sprint race, second in the feature with Anders Lily Jorde rounding out the top three. Sven Demmel in fourth. Pipping Marcus Giesdahl as, uh, it, it, for, for fourth place. Simeon Mulderclave will take sixth. And it's going to be Richard Jones. The run of form for SAS Racing's number 99 continues. Another win in the AM class for Richard Jones. He'll finish ahead of uh, David Kodpas. And it's going to be another podium for the Blue Sky Esports crew, courtesy of Stuart Rice in the number 99 Porsche. Alex Scarrett rounds out the top 10. Barnsley takes 11th. Tor Anders Bourbon takes 12th. Rachel Hoff, well, there was a podium in the offing. She ends up fourth in Am, 13th overall ahead of Vegard olsen Lea. Good run by Torbjorn Mele on that particular occasion. Stefan Malis, uh, having a drama coming out of Torrevit, finishes in 16th ahead of Rob Williams. Gordon Hauger, 18th. 
Chris Evans comes across the line with a rear wing on that wagon. He finishes 19th ahead of uh, Ike Lekui with uh, Getil Larson, 21st. Miles Owens and uh, Daniel Lewis round out the top 25. Uh, Magnus Leidod finishing a lap down. Jordan Malcolm with that. Oh, Stuart Pearson, he's crawling. I think he, oh, uh, he's got no fuel. He's on fumes. Just roll it down the hill, Stuart. You might get enough momentum to go through help. I don't think anyone will because he's the only one left out on the track. Well, there's well, there was Miles Owens, I think, coming through, was it? Or no, that's you and Bremer. He's gonna oh, he's gonna roll back down the hill and give Stu Pearson a push. That's the sportsman's gesture after winning the race. There we go. It's a bit like Senna and Mansell in a <laughs> Silverstone back in the early nineties, only that Pearson gets a push rather than sitting in the cockpit alongside you and Bremer, because that in iRacing is not feasibly possible at all. It's not physically possible. There you go. Nice bit of sportsmanship gesture. And Stuart Pearson comes across the line in 23rd, thanks to the welcome assist from you and Bremer from Sim Race Sweden Esports. My goodness me. But the end of two, ra two races here at Portimao, someone had to run out of fuel, didn't they? <laughs> Right, so Ewan Bremer picks up a win for Sim Race Sweden Esports. Kim Andre Bjorklund from Race 1 winner, starting 15th, picks up P2. A good run for the 88 from Norway. Anders Lidiorde in third ahead of Sven Demel. Marcus Giesdahl, Simon Maldeklive round out the top six. Richard Jones picks up another win in the AM class for SAS Racing ahead of David Korpas for Lucha Sim Racing in the 59. Mercedes ahead of Stuart Rice in the number 42, who's eagerly chomping at the bit. He's waiting in the interview booth along with Kim Andre Bjorkland as well. We'll be speaking to them in just a couple of minutes' time. Alexander Scarrett rounds out the top 10 ahead of Chris Barnes with Tor Anders Bervin rounding out the top 12. The latter two uh, copying a drive through penalty in the latter stages of the race. Rachel Hoff finishes fourth in AM. At 13th overall, ahead of uh, Vegard Olsen, Leah, Torbjorn Mele, and Stefan Meles, running at the top 16. Rob Williams in 17th, ahead of Gordon Hauger. Then Chris Evans and Ike Lecuri. Kjetil Larsen, Per Havard Hafstad, Stuart Pearson, Miles Owens, Daniel Lewis, Magnus Dyrod, Jordan Malcolm, and Jesus Amondare, rounding out the 28 strong grid. But you know what? Let's, uh, let's, let's bring in. Uh, Stuart Rice, first of all. Let's have a chat with one of our good friends from the AM class. So let's bring Stuart in. Stuart, good evening. Good evening. Well, another welcome podium for Blue Sky Esports. Um, it was looking pretty good for you and Rachel in the, the first 15 minutes, uh, but still a, a good solid amount of points for the team, third and fourth in the AM class. How are you guys feeling right now? Um, Honestly was insane racing. I will give 100% credit to Ike on that one, who I was side by side with from pretty much about a half the lap on what, at one point. It's just exceptional racing on their part as well. Um, both of us obviously are blown and happy with that because <laughs> that was really, really close and hard fought. And yeah, <laughs> it's nice to actually have some racing because I've sort of been used to sitting around lapping a little bit on my own sometimes. So it's nice to actually be having a few battles in there as well. And also when you've got a, 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 you know, a teammate that you know very, very well, you and Rachel have known each other for a long, long time, especially mm. when you guys were with Triple P previously. Uh, but yeah, a solid result for the team, good points for the AM Team Championship, and also for you both to hopefully spring a, a couple more positions up the order in the AM classification, reference the driver's standings. Absolutely. Um, and full credit to Rachel as well. She was, at one point, started struggling a little bit on pace, then pulled it back in and just held the pace to the end, which was sort of the goal at one point. That's what we're effectively saying. Just hold it to the end at this point, because if you push too hard, too much risk, and you could lose even just the points you have now. So that was the goal, basically. Yeah, it's, it's a bit of a challenge here at Portimao. I mean, myself and James were talking about it earlier on in the broadcast. Very much a roller coaster. We've got another one coming up in, in a week's time. Obviously, we head to Spa uh, to mm. the longest circuit on the calendar, and also one of the most fearsome as well, I think. Um, but it, it, it does provide a, a good challenge and also a good learning aspect for, for any driver that, that jumps into GT4, would you say? I would absolutely agree. It's a difficult track to get your head around because the amount of times that 
the weight's just not there on the wheels if you're going over a crest, especially into sort of mid part of the lap where you come up over a massive crest. And effectively, you can't see what's on the other side until you come over the top. Um, and then it's a massive compression zone. So it's just the car's balance is constantly changing. And it's very, very difficult to be consistent on the track. So consistency is pretty much personally a real goal with this track, just to make sure that you can actually keep those lap times around the same. Brilliant. Well, anyone you want to give a shout out to before we let you go tonight, Stuart? Um, again, probably Rach, just purely because of how well she drove this time round. And again, I could just purely for that insane battle in the first race that was just awesome. Brilliant. Stuart, congrats on the podium. We look forward to seeing you and Rachel back in action in a week's time at Spa Francorchamps for round four. Thank you very much. So a big thank you there to Stuart Rice. Okay, let's uh, bring in Anders Liliorde from the uh, Team Vikings Thor outfit. Let's bring him in. Anders, good evening. Hello, good evening. Well, uh, two races, two different stories uh, from your perspective with the 918 Team Vikings Thor Porsche. Um, 12th in the opening race and then P3, uh, but it wasn't without its dramas, was it, tonight? No, it was a bit. It was not so easy. So, I was uh, starting uh, in the future, uh, starting uh, there I did and uh, tried to go up uh, in the places. Uh, uh, but it uh, it was not so easy. <laughs> mm. I mean, so... let, let, yeah. I mean, let's briefly talk about um, when it was three wide, and you unfortunately had uh, Chris Evans in front of you, and you've got Kim Andre Bjorklund to the outside. You've got Alex Scarrett to the inside, and you were you were put into a very very difficult situation. Um, yeah. And we had the resulting contact. It, it does sometimes happen, doesn't it? When you got one driver who was on the top 15 reverse grid pole position is yes. trying to just have a comfortable race. But when you saw Kim to your left and Alex to your right, what was your first thought apart from, oh dear, this could end up ugly? <laughs> uh, I tried to lift off, um, uh, try, but uh, in the, when I uh, went for the break, it uh, was too late. Uh, because uh, I, I haven't seen on uh, what uh, seen on it yet, so I don't know exactly what happened. Uh, so it was uh, it was uh, not uh, so um, fun, you can say, uh, because uh, we had tried to pass him several corners, and we. It was uh, a little problematic with uh, the other drivers in front of us too. So it was not uh, not so easy. And when you get three wide, uh, where where do you want to go? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You ran you ran out of space there, Anders. But um, yes. but at, but at least still to to finish with the P3 um, in in this second race, uh, and obviously finishing, you know. You started P12 in this race, so you were quite high up the order anyway. Um, so a good haul of points. Um, anyone that you would like to thank before we let you go? Yes, uh, I have to thank uh, my teammates in Team Vikings and uh, all the other Norwegians in the series and uh, uh, all the other drivers. Uh, it's fun to have someone to drive a GT4 with. Brilliant. And as Lily your day, thank you so much for joining us. We'll see you next week for round four at Spa. Thank you. Bye bye. So, no, no. oh, hang on. I was, just about to... <laughs> I was just about to pull Kim Andre Bjorkland and Per Havard has just joined in. <laughs> Let's bring in uh, the, the man who's scored the most points tonight, Kim Andre Bjorkland. Kim, good evening. Uh, a win in the sprint race. You, you you did your best. You got a second. You've closed that gap to Sven Demmel in the points going into round four at Spa. But firstly, your overtake at turn three. How on God's green earth did you manage to do that one? My godfathers, as if the fuel saving at Motegi last season, you pulled the bl you po pulled the best overtake of the night. Yeah, uh, <laughs> I had plenty of overtakes. <laughs> I can't remember. 
just that, but <laughs> what lap was that on? First lap? Uh, I think it, well, it was the first or second lap, if I remember correctly, but yeah. it was just the way you went, right, hold my Norwegian beer, I'm throwing it round the outside, and it was its turn three, like, you got the run, and I was just like thinking, this is not going to be possible, you lined it up perfectly, but you know, there was, yeah, there was some I great... I think fight. it was when I took uh, Jones, maybe? I, I think it was. Maybe. Yes, I yeah. think it was when you got past Richard. But, I mean, apart from that, um, you know, the car was really, really good in qualifying. You led every... You got the jump on everybody else. You you lined up on the front row. You literally got the, the whole shot start and led every single lap of the opening race. But race two... We we just had a chat with that. Uh, I just had a chat with Anders about when you were to his outside. We had Alex Scarrett to the inside, and then we had poor Craig Ev- uh, Chris Evans in piggy in the middle. Got gets a tag from Anders, and Anders explains to me. Well, he said, "Well, when you're when you got three cars that close, where are you going to go?" Um, and you just kept out of you you pulled it to the left. You kept it out of harm's way. Um, just really some great driving we we saw from you again tonight. Um, what's your secret skill? What's your secret superpower that you get from Norway to do all this? Huh? I'm not sure. I'm trying to keep cool, and as you that uh, overtake I did there, I think that was my best overtake by, uh, for the night. But uh, yeah. <laughs> but now, but now, but now the focus, Kim, switches to the longest circuit on the calendar. We've got Spa next week. Yeah. Um, how do you think the Porsche is going to handle around there? I mean, the BMWs are pretty good all rounder, so we might see Sven uh, start firing back. I mean, he had a solid amount of results tonight. Um, I think it was third in race one, fourth in in the feature. Yeah. Um, how do you think the Porsche is going to handle around Spa? It's it's a pretty good. It's a fast car in a straight line. It's good around the corners, but that BMW, I'm not so sure what we could see next week. What are you hoping for? I'm not sure, to be honest. The BMW seems really good on the brakes, especially with Sven behind the wheel. Mm-hmm. So it's not that much hard braking zones at Spa, so might get away with some of it there. Spa could be somewhat comparable to Portimao, so I'm not sure, but uh, try to put down some practice for the next week too, so Brilliant. Kim, anyone you want to uh, shout out before we let you go tonight? Of course, my uh, team always backing me up and we try to work together to be faster uh, every week. And you guys for streaming this madness we're trying to pull off. Brilliant. Kim on JB Auckland, well done tonight. We'll see you next week for round four. Yep. Well, James. Um, another night in the bag for GT4 for the Global Challenge, and we head to Spa Francorchamps next week. I'm really looking forward to that one. It should be a cracker. Yeah, it should be. Spa wasn't the most popular circuit, um, to be fair. Sure. I wasn't in love with it either, to be honest. I wasn't quite sure if it was going to go down well or what the situation was going to be, because it's one of them well-used circuit that you know we use all the time. It's been used or it's been used multiple times on different things and you know but let's see how it gets on it's only going to work out or it won't work out and, and hopefully for us it will work out and i'm sure these guys will do a great job with it indeed well that really wraps up coverage of round three of the jpb gt4 global challenge live on the jp broadcasting network coming up well pretty much as we're finishing prospect t racing league tier two round six at abu dhabi it's probably underway as we speak. Uh, then tomorrow night, we've got the Radical Race Series Season 2 of 2024, Round 5 at Imola. We've then got the NAS Virtual Modern Sports Car Championship of 2024, uh, the 60 Minutes of Long Beach on the 12th, followed by the Virtual World Sports Car Championship Historic, 1964, 250 kilometers of Spa on the 12th. Uh, then we've got the OGRL Coffee Cup Season 1, Road, uh, Road America, Round 8. Uh, hashtag pray for Bill on Sunday afternoon at 2.15 p.m. British summertime. And then, as we always like to cap off here on JPB every week, it's IGB Fun, Super Formula Lights, Season 2, 2024, 
round five at Twin Ring Motegi. You've been joining myself, Alex Goldschmidt, and James Parfit here on the JP Broadcasting Network. Thank you so much for watching our uh, GT4 spectacular tonight. We'll see you in one week's time. But as I always like to say, if in doubt, flat out. But we'll see you next time. Good night. Thank <laughs> you.